There is one brand that you talk about in your book, Patagonia, mm. uh, the gear and outdoor clothing company. And they have a very interesting history of how they got started, but they have been able to very successfully build their messaging and their brand. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that and how they did that. I think the best way to talk about Patagonia is just from my own personal experience, right? So they created this platform called the Footprint Chronicles. And the Footprint Chronicles was all about fighting friction. So Patagonia is in the outdoor gear in apparel category. What's the friction that resides in that category? Well, to enjoy those products, you need a healthy outdoors. What's more is the creation of those products actually damages the outdoors because when we buy new products, we create garbage. When they develop new products, they have manufacturing byproducts, right? So they created something called the Footprint Chronicles, which, which fights friction by empowering people through education. And what they did is they created an immersive website and you could pick any product. Let's say those board shorts that you love. You go swimming and you come out of the water and 45 seconds they're dry. Well, guess what? Mother Nature did not create that product. When they create that product, they have to manufacture it. So you can actually follow the supply chain all around the globe and see how and where these products are created. And what they didn't try to do was paint a rosy picture. They weren't like, look how great we are at every stop. They said, here's the good, here's the bad, and here's what we want to do about it. They literally outed themselves for their negative impact on the environment, which is crazy. I've never heard of a brand in any way investing aggressively in outing themselves for what could be described as bad behavior, right? But what happened with that is they fought friction by educating people. And a lot of people probably saw these experiences and purchased less. But what they gain out of that is unwavering loyalty and evangelism. So what happened with me is I really fell in love with this initiative and I met their CEO and a bunch of team members as we filmed the documentary. And it was Black Friday. It's the number one shopping day of the year. Brands sell more on Black Friday than they do in months combined. And because I love the brand, I wanted to get this jacket. In my mind's eye, I had this blue fleece jacket. Really wanted it. Type in patagonia.com, bring up the website, on the homepage, boom, like, like they read my mind. The jacket is right there. Awesome. Then next to it, in a giant font, don't buy this jacket. And then a button, learn more. Holy smokes, what's going on here? Click on it. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Number one is reduce. Their basic point is this. Hey man, you wanna buy this jacket? We'll sell it to you. But if you buy it, you're gonna create garbage with your old jacket and we're gonna create byproducts with a new jacket. Maybe you don't need this jacket. Maybe you can buy a little bit less. As a matter of fact, they've got a documentary, full-blown documentary called Warnware, and it celebrates people who have kept their Patagonia gear for decades and decades and decades and actually don't buy anymore. So I'm Jewish, I felt guilty. I didn't buy the jacket, right? They lost my sale. They lost thousands of sales that day, I'm sure. But they gained my unwavering loyalty. More important than that, they gained my evangelism. So I'm telling all my friends, I'm up on my social channels, right? We're here doing this interview and we're talking about how great Patagonia is. More important than my yuppie ass, right? Is the people who are truly influential, right? These are the people who are leading camping, and fly fishing and hiking adventures all around the world. By definition, these guides are leaders. They are influential and they're covered head to toe in Patagonia because Patagonia defends what they care about the most in this world, which is the environment. Patagonia fights friction by empowering people through education. Through that, they've become a passion brand. Through that, they've built an army of evangelists. Yeah. But isn't that a risk to their business and their business model and their revenues? or did it work out? Well, right now, I mean, they were recently on the cover of a magazine known as the coolest company on the planet. Um, you know, Yvonne, the CEO or former CEO, proudly says every time they make a decision that's right for the environment, it helps make them more money. You know, in a lot of ways, it's irrational. This is totally irrational behavior. Telling your customers to buy less, outing yourself for what could be described as bad behavior, that's nuts, right? But out of that irrational behavior, they get 
irrational results, right? These jackets are sometimes double and triple what it costs to get a perfectly good jacket from a company like Columbia. It's irrational for people to buy their hats for, I don't know, $29 and become walking billboards. It's irrational to sit around the campfire and tell everyone how much you love this brand. It's a corporation, right? It's not your friend. That's irrational behavior. But they get that irrational behavior because they have irrational behavior themselves. So to your point, is it a risk? Absolutely it's a risk. But right now, because of the pace of change, because of data and technology, the biggest risk is not taking a risk, right? This is what we're seeing right now with why CEO of Ford just turned over, right? Not willing to take risks. I spoke to, I was on a radio interview the other day and you could hear the host and how scared they were to take risks because all of Detroit is really worried, like let's not do anything crazy. You know what, if you're not willing to take a risk, somebody else is, a lot of people are. And one of those brands are gonna disrupt your industry. So it's almost like cannibalism, right? That was the big thing back in the day. You gotta be willing to cannibalize your own brand and your own product. Now it's you have to be willing to disrupt your own brand in your own product.